people's stuff. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> so that no pressure. Yeah. yeah. It's your own fault for coming here. You can follow him uh, on Twitter at Andrew Nalen. Um, he is going to be telling a story from a piece called The Long War, which appeared in Invictus Volume 3, called A Little Messed Up and a, 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 a Tiny Bit Broken. Um, so you have 10 minutes, Andrew. I hadn't talked to my dad in five years. After years of neglect and abuse, I experienced an act of grace called a divorce. And the years from 16 to 21 flowed on kind of effortlessly. I started school, and it was almost like those years were part of a different life. But on February 10th, 2013, I got a call from my Uncle Tom. You know, Uncle Tom had been my dad's best friend and always offered these tantalizing views into what he was like as a kid. So when I missed a voicemail from him, I knew one of two things had happened, and I prayed that I wasn't right. Hey, Uncle Tom, um, I'm just calling because I, I missed your voicemail, and, uh, and are you sitting down? Uh, no. Why? Andy, your dad's dead. And there's a cold shudder in his voice. Uh, like myself, he must have always known this was a possibility. Okay? Okay. Have you told mom yet? No. I can hear him crying. Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom, look, I need you to tell me if you told Mom, because if you didn't tell her yet, then, then that means that I have to, and I don't think she knows. Hey, look, I'll call you back as soon as I can, Uncle Tom. I'm really sorry. And the ride back home is a blur. As soon as I get there, I realize my roommates aren't there, so I go right to the bathroom, and I sit down in the tub with all of my clothes on, and I turn the water on, and I start randomly dialing numbers. And first I call my mom, but she doesn't pick up. And then I call an ex-girlfriend who doesn't pick up, and I remember why she's an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I start dialing all these numbers, and suddenly my mom calls back and, hey, honey. Is everything okay? Mom, are you sitting down? No, honey, why? Dad killed himself. Look, Mom, can we, um, can we just, can we talk about this tomorrow? Sure, honey. I'm not gonna kill myself. I just need you to know that. I'll talk to you tomorrow. After I hang up, I turn the faucet all the way up and I bury my head beneath the water. And I don't know if I want to breathe or if I want to live, but just before I run out of breath, I pull my head out of the bathtub. Next day I get a call from my mom and she wants to know if I want to go help clean my dad's apartment. And I don't. But she's not asking if I want to, she's telling me that she needs to, so I say okay. And it's better kept than I expected. And I brush past all the relatives I haven't seen in years. I go right for his room because even if I don't want to admit it, I want to find something that tells me how this happened. And it's so much better kept than I expected. And I wander through the bathroom towards this closet, and I can see the noose at the base. And I always thought he would die by pills or gunshot, but this tells me that someone came in, which means that someone found him and saw this, which means someone had to cut it down before I came in so that I could find it. And I wander into his room, and there are these three boxes on the ground. And one of them is filled with medication, 
One of them is filled with medical bills. And one of them is filled with pictures of me. And some of me is a little kid, and some up in 2013. He never stopped collecting pictures of his son. And I leave that room and I wander into the next one. And my mom is staring at this ornate pot on the ground. And she says, I bought this for him. And she starts pointing to all the objects in the room, and this, and this, and this. And I wrap my arm around her, and I say, Mom, I think we should go now. And so we leave the battlefield to those relatives who are more equipped to deal with the carnage. I hope the next tenant would find peace there. It's a short drive home, but we don't talk until we get into the driveway. And she puts her fingers over mine like a practice general and says, I know you think this is the worst thing he ever did to you, but you're wrong. The worst thing he ever did was make you feel small and like you couldn't turn to anyone. And I know you think this is the worst thing that's ever happened to you, but you will live through this. As we get out of the car, I see myself in the reflection of the windshield for a moment, and my reflection is indistinguishable from my father's. Like my mother, I will carry this weight for many lifetimes. Like her, I will carry the survivor's weight like a heavy chain. Like my father, I'll fight. His last lesson, in his darkness, he taught me. two weeks into our writing project, by the way. Curveball. <laughs> Curveball. <laughs> yeah. Nine. 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 Eight. I mean, one person missed that one. All right.